Impeaching President Donald J. Trump for abusing his powers. The clerk will call the roll. After an acrimonious 14-hour debate yesterday. Ms. Jackson Lee. Aye. Today, the voting lasted less than 10 minutes. Mr. Collins. No. Every member stuck with their party. Mr. Chairman, there are 23 ayes and 17 noes. The article is agreed to. And with that, Donald Trump is now one step closer to becoming just the third U.S. president in history to be impeached. For the third time in a little over a century and a half, the House Judiciary Committee has voted articles of impeachment against the president. Those articles, abuse of power and obstruction of Congress, now go to the full House of Representatives for a vote next week. They're expected to pass with the Democratic majority and no Republican support. I have never in my entire life seen such an unfair, rigged railroad job against the President of the United States. Even with his impeachment all but certain, Trump didn't seem to dwell on the day's significance. It's a very sad thing for our country, but uh, it seems to be very good for me politically. He accused Democrats of trivializing impeachment, suggesting it will come back to haunt them. Someday there'll be a Democrat president and there'll be a Republican House, and I suspect they're going to remember it. After the House vote, Trump goes on trial in the Senate. The president wants to drag it out with lots of witnesses. Republicans reportedly want to use their majority to end it quickly. I'll do whatever I want. Look, there is, we did nothing wrong, so I'll do long or short. The process may be up in the air, but the outcome seems set. We all know how it's going to end. There's no chance the president's going to be removed from office. As for whether senators will be impartial jurors, McConnell says he's working closely with the White House to plan every step of the trial. Stephen D'Souza, CBC News, New York.